What's up, guys? Uh, as we know, the Saints are currently 1-3, and three, and it's just not looking very good right now, and a lot of this is because of the offense. So today we're going to talk about some of the issues the Saints have mostly on offense and how the Saints can fix them because, let's face it, they're 1-3, and three, and the, the team's just not looking good right now. This is probably the most disappointing start to the season that we've really seen in a long time because usually we see the Saints clean it up before week four. We're already a quarter, almost a quarter through the season, and the, the, the Saints, especially the offense, hasn't really gelled yet. We've seen the Saints' defense look really good in some games, and the offense just hasn't been able to deliver except for the fourth quarter against the Falcons. They looked somewhat competent against the Falcons. Not, not the Falcons. I meant the uh, the uh, the Vikings. Sorry, I'm watching the Pelicans preseason game. They're going crazy right now. They're up 62-43. to 43. But anyway, that's, that's not about the Pelicans, even though they're going crazy this year, unlike the Saints. We're talking about some of the issues the Saints have in offense, and that starts with the quarterback situation. A lot of people are calling for benching Jameis Winston because Andy Dalton really looked a lot better than Jameis Winston has for most of the season, especially the Bucks game and the Panthers game. Jameis Winston looked really, really rough. <coughs> Let me go ahead and tell you guys now. This is still Jameis Winston's team. The Saints signed Jameis Winston to a two-year, $28 million deal in the offseason, and they really built this team around Jameis. They showed a lot of confidence in him. This is Winston's team, whether you all like it or not. Andy Dalton was clearly signed just to be the backup. Now, before y'all flame me, I do have my reasons why I still believe this is Jameis Winston's team. We cannot simply ignore what we saw from Jameis Winston last year. He went 14 touchdowns and three interceptions. His main issue was the fact that he kept turning the ball over, and he had a really good season in terms of not turning the ball over. Only three interceptions in seven games. That's really good. And, I mean, it's really weird because there's some, like, for example, the Panthers game, he did not turn the ball over. But the fourth quarter, he had two really weird interceptions. He had one interception in which he got tipped up in the air, and the defensive lineman literally one-hand diving interception makes the catch. That, like, that's so fucking stupid. He has no business making that type of catch. And another interception at the very end just chunking up the ball because it's in the game. But we have seen Winston throw some very odd passes. Like, for example, that pass through to Marquez Callaway in the back of the end zone against the Panthers. He should never, ever throw that ball, and that ball should have definitely been an interception or an incomplete pass, and yet he still decided to throw the ball. It's very odd, and those plays don't end up being turnovers, but some of the plays like that defensive lineman interception from the Panthers are interceptions against him. It's really weird. And in the Bucks game, we saw him make three horrible decisions. Just the decision-making has been the issue. It's his decision-making, and I'm not sure. At first, in the Bucks game, I thought it was just Jameis Winston making bad decisions, which it was, a lot of bad decisions. But in the, the Panthers game really made me realize how much the injury is actually affecting him because you gotta you got to realize there are four – sorry, I, for, I forgot what they were called – four fractures in his back that's really fucking him. And it just progressively got worse. He said that it hurt for him to get out of the car. So could you imagine what it's like to play football and get thrown around by 350-pound linemen? I mean, holy shit. I mean, I, I bet that's crazy. And But the main issue I'm talking about with the back here is that you can clearly see he's lacking some of the touch on his deep passes because we haven't really seen his deep passes be accurate in the last couple of games he played while he was injured. For example, there's one throw I remember to Jarvis Landry in the Panthers game when he was wide open. And we usually see Winston have a lot of touch on his throws deep down the field, especially last year. Like, for example, in the preseason game against the Jacks, he had, he had a really great touch throw to Marquez Callaway for a touchdown. And you can say, you know, oh, the preseason, whatever. But... He he made throws like that in the regular season too last year. Like I remember the Traquan Smith touchdown pass in the Buccaneers game, in which he was injured last year, or he got injured. That touch pass to Traquan Smith in the back of the end zone was a beautiful pass, in which he does make when he's healthy. But I think the back injury is just really messing up his touch on his throws because this throw to Jarvis Landry went way out of the back of the end zone, nowhere near him. Now, could I be reaching? Sure, but I really do think this is affecting him. Now, does this excuse the decision making? No, he really needs to. Fix the decision making. He's, throwing, he's holding the ball way too long on in some areas. Like the O line has been good, which leads to, to one of my other issues. I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the O line is being flamed by Saints fans and Saints media, but they're really not the problem. Really, week one they were really bad against the Falcons. I won't lie to you guys. Week one has been really bad, or was really bad, but ever since then they've really cleaned it up. Caesar Ruiz got a lot of hate week one, and deservedly so, but. Week two and week four, especially those two games, they were some of the best games of his career. Like, he's actually showing some signs of development, which is really good because, uh, you know, you hate to see the Saints waste a first-round pick, especially in a year when they don't have one, and especially since Peyton Turner's not looking fucking good at all. 
it's it's at least good to see one of our first round picks looking competent. Now, yes, Chris Olave is a stud. We haven't seen Trevor Penning yet, but by the way, Chris Olave is definitely worth two first round picks. He's literally has a chance to win offensive rookie of the year right now. But anyway, back to the O line. They are not the problem at all. We've seen the Saints have a lot of issues when it comes to blitz pickups the first three weeks with Jameis Winston, but with Andy Dalton, we really didn't really see that. It was kind of weird. Um, but I'm still Jameis Winston has shown all these issues, but I just now, yes, Andy Dalton probably did play the most complete game for a quarterback on the Saints so far this season, but I still believe in Jameis Winston. We simply cannot ignore the fact what we saw from him last year. And, I mean, we didn't hype up all this shit for nothing. So, I mean, I'm really confident the Saints can turn it around. And let's be honest here. They're fucking injured. They didn't have Jam- – Jameis Winston has been injured since the Falcons game. And he's still – keep- I know the ACL isn't an issue anymore, but you also got to keep in mind he's not that far removed from an ACL, and he's getting all banged up. I'd say, honestly, I'm not sure because, I mean, this is dropping on Wednesday, but I'm recording this on Tuesday, so I don't know what the practice report or the status of Jameis Winston is, but I really don't know if he's going to play this week. I'd honestly rest him until you really see him close, if not 100% completely, because the way he's playing while he's injured, he's just not looking good. He's not looking effective. He's not the best option for this team. We really saw that against the Panthers. He's just... He's way too injured to be playing on the football field, and Andy Dalton is more than capable. He literally almost won this game. And honestly, the defense fucking sold. I mean, really, the Andy Dalton, I think, played well, well enough to win the game, especially considering how injured we were. We didn't have Alvin Kamara. We didn't have Michael Thomas. Those are our two biggest weapons on offense. Now, I think Alvin Kamara is going to come back this week, if I'm being honest. He really almost played this week, but he just, the ribs are just lingering just a little bit, and it's really weird. I, I do expect Kamara to play this week. Michael Thomas, I'm not sure, but I do think he's getting close. I don't think the injury is that serious for Michael Thomas. I really do expect him to play this week, if not this week, the next week. But if he can play this week, he really needs to because, like, this game is definitely, like, the – damn, Devontae Graham is going crazy. The Pelicans have 70 points, and it's not even halftime yet. Holy shit. Anyway, I'm sorry. This is what a New Orleans team should be playing like right now. But anyway, uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, Michael Thomas. He needs to play if he can because this is literally like as much of a game as it gets. Now, we'll have another video actually previewing the game when that when that comes out. But I thought I figured since it's such a weird point in the season, there's a lot of issues to address. We should go ahead and talk about this. But I do believe Michael Thomas, I'm not sure he's going to play, but he needs to. The Saints really need to. And obviously, if they're not healthy, don't force him to play. But we got some serious issues going on here. So hopefully these guys can play. Now, there's one more issue I want to address on the offensive side of the ball, and it's not even really the offensive side of the ball. It's just in general, and that's the coaching. Has the coaching been a problem? It depends on how you look at it, okay? I'm not too worried about Dennis Allen because I do think he really keeps a sense of continuity. Now, when it comes to discipline and penalties and stuff like that, I do think D.A. could be an issue. Not necessarily an issue, but he could be part of the blame. Now, as of the fumbles and the turnovers, I'm not sure. The interceptions and all that, maybe. That's something Pete Carmichael has to deal with, Jameis Winston and all that, but... Or also, you also got to keep in mind Jameis being Jameis. Because, I mean, Jameis is always going to have that turnover, uh, what's the word, reputation. Even if he gets it off his back, like, I really don't think he's going to, I don't think he's even close to what he was in Tampa, even though we saw him have those really Tampa Jameis-esque interceptions the past couple games he played. I still think he's a different quarterback, and he's not what he was in Tampa in New Orleans. But when it comes to the fumbles, I'm really not sure what the issue is there. Yeah, is that coaching a little bit? Yes. But, I mean, goddamn, Mark Ingram has been in this league for so long. He le- he needs to know how to not fumble. Even Kamara fumbled. Deontay Hardy's fumbling on punt returns. And I'm not going to excuse Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton did fumble at the end of the half of the Vikings game. Everyone is fucking fumbling on the Saints. And they just they need to quit it. I mean, the Saints have to just secure the ball. The Saints win one season having only eight turnovers the whole season. And they've already expl- exploded past that this year. They had two turnovers last game. They had, I believe, two or three. I think three against the Panthers. They had five all in the last, like, 17 minutes against the Bucks, And they also had two more against the Falcons. I mean, it's absurd. It's not just interceptions. It's also fumbles. Fumbles more so than interceptions, if we're being honest here. So, And is, is that coaching? I'm not sure. But we've also seen P. Carmichael have some really odd play-calling uh, tendencies. We've seen a lot of passing on first down and then running on second down and then it's already third and long now i saw we saw a lot more rhythm on offense in this vikings game so the play calling tendencies weren't much of a problem i really saw p carmichael stick to the run a lot more on first down and second down and when he when it was past situations he really did pass the ball we got some great play action game going he ran the ball really well with latavius murray and Taysom hill it really sucks to see latavius murray get 
go to the Vikings. Not the Vikings. Go to the Broncos after playing so well against the Vikings. But if you all have seen reports about Latavius Murray and all that, you should know how the practice squad works. He just went to the Broncos. It is what it is. I'm not going to sit here and explain about that because I'm honestly rambling way too long. But coaching does need to be cleaned up a little bit. DA needs to get his guys ready to go. Penalties, it's really the penalties when it comes to coaching. It's definitely penalties. But I don't want to sit here and talk about this for too long. That's kind of my take on the, on the offense and all that. And I think the Saints, ultimately, the more they can more than definitely come back from this 1-3 and three start. But especially because you look at the NFC and the NFC South. The NFC South is the Bucks 2-2, two and two, Falcons 2-2, two and two, Panthers 1-3, and three, Saints 1-3. and three. The Saints are only a game and a half away from taking the lead in the division. And it's only week five. We got plenty of time. Now, if we lose to the Seahawks, I'm fucking full-on panicking. I'm, almost, I'm damn near running the season off. <coughs> Even if the division is so within reach. If we lose to the Seahawks, I'm actually, like, losing my shit. But it's not time to ride off the ship yet. If the Saints bounce back against the Seahawks and look good, then I think we can. there's lots of optimism when it comes to this team. But we do have a really tough schedule coming up, and we just got to see what happens, guys. I mean... That's just we just gotta see what happens. We've seen the Saints come back from this type of start before. I mean one and three, I'm not really sure. But I mean it's still possible. Don't give up yet. It's a long season. And I know it sucks right now, but I mean we still got a chance to make some noise. So just hold on to that little bit of hope you guys have. Thanks for watching. I'm sorry this was a little too long. Uh but that's kind of my take on the team. They can mo most definitely come back from this. And I guess I'll I'll talk to you guys next time, uh, which is gonna be when I preview the Seahawks game. So I'll see you guys then.